Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was Penhurst Asylum. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, which you can see right there. Also, I didn't realize you were going to come in hot with the sound effects. I was going to actually say something else. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say you can check out our research notes at the BuzzFeed.com website if you haven't done so uh, to see... Uh, what goes into making this nonsense. It's madness, it's madness. There's a lot of good stuff up there. You gotta check it out. I'm plugging it. It's good, right? <laughs> yeah, you really sold it. I'm hey, gonna click on it. Out. You if gotta I click. had access to a comp right now, I'd click on it myself. Must click. That's, a, that's Shane's must click of the week. Moving on to questions. Uh, do you wanna go first here? Yeah, here's one from Facebook. We're diving right into Facebook. Hey, Devin Wilson. Do you think the spirits will only talk and react to Ryan because he has the belief that they're real, whereas Shane doesn't believe and so the spirits don't bother with him? It seems in this episode the ghosts were more active with Ryan because he spoke to them peacefully and Shane was just taking the piss. <laughs> hashtag Bugara, hashtag love Shane's reactions though. I don't know, it's the, it's the radio, so I don't care. But it is quite coincidental that it you just, it just doesn't happen for you. Maybe, yes, it is. Okay, if you, if you were to believe in energy, wouldn't you buy that though? That you put off this douche-toyed energy that just kind of ushers things away? Douche-toyed energy? Yeah, that's you. It's like when you go to a party and you can kind of just feel the energy that this guy doesn't want to be there. And you're like, oh, what the fuck's this guy doing here? I feel like ghosts would want to party with me though, because I'm like, hey guys, let's come out. Hey, let's have some fun here. Let's dance. And you're like, like, I can't imagine you at a party just standing in the corner. <laughs> oh yeah, because people always respond to you when you go to a party and you say, hey, here's your chance to murder me. No one's looking. Why don't you come over here and rip my bones out? You I know? feel like if I walked into a party doing that, people would be like, yeah, all right, this guy's fucking weird. No, Let's get crazy. No, it'd be like, okay. Next season's uh, gonna be my party season. I'm gonna party with the ghosts. You're just gonna bring a red solo cup, wear a backwards hat, yeah. I'm gonna bring blast some, some pong balls. Some Kesha. <laughs> is, that just, what, is that what the bros listen to? Is that what you think bros listen to, Kesha? That's what they listen to. Next question. This one comes from uh, at Flavia underscore Bertoletti. Uh, why are you guys not sleeping in the haunted places anymore? That actually is just a simple answer. Uh, they won't let us. Oh, is part. that true? They wouldn't let us for a long time? Well, also, to be fair, even if they were to be like, hey, would you like to sleep in Penhurst Asylum? I would have been like, no, I would not like to do that. That sounds like an awful thing. Every bed in there was covered with either bed bugs, dust mites, uh, or spiders. Yeah, that place was filthy. I, I wouldn't mind sleeping in more places. I think it's beneficial when it's, you know, it makes more sense when it's like a hotel. Yeah, and we get to sleep on a bed. Uh, that makes sense. But sleeping in an asylum, I guess that would kind of make sense. They wouldn't let us anyway, but. Uh, most of the time, it's the location saying, hey, you guys, if you want, you could stay over. Uh, we'll usually ask, can we stay over if we go to these places? And a lot of times they say no, because more often than not, they're a functioning business. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't want two a-holes sleeping in the, you know, the basement. Next one's from Facebook, Chloe L. Easterling. What if Jeff was one of the mean workers and killed a patient named Bri? Bri. Bri. And killed a patient named Bri. And her last words were, Please, Jeff. <laughs> As if she were begging him not to kill her. This conversation is pretty compelling. In the moment, I was able to actually not be scared because I was getting responses and it was pretty cool. <laughs> Who's here with me? It just sounded like the radio to me, but. Well, that's you. Uh, uh, let's just uh, take off your stupid little skeptic mask for a second. Just take it off, yeah. No. Put it, put it back in your, oh, God. holy shit. Here okay. I am. So, I believe in ghosts. Okay, well, well, okay, okay, don't need the, yeah, right, well, don't need the role play. I'm just saying. Sometimes when it. people die, they come back and look they're it. partly invisible. I don't even, if that is an impression of me, that doesn't even sound like me. Oh. Also, my face doesn't look like that. You, all right, tell me the theory. I don't turn into Elmer Fudd. All right. Do you think this Brie uh, person could have been someone murdered by uh, an evil doctor or one of the workers that was perhaps not that nice. It just, just seems like a reach, right? 
Yeah, a little bit. That's the point of taking off the skeptic mask. You're supposed to analyze it. Okay, pretend you're just analyzing dialogue. How about that? I gotta warn you. I gotta warn you, when I took off the mask, there's just another one underneath. <laughs> it's all masks, baby! His head is just a giant Russian doll of skepticism. I'm an onion. Yeah. Here's one from, from Gramtown. Emily M. Jones, 0121, at the part where you thought you heard the two whimpers, but the second one could have been an owl. Immediately afterwards, I thought I heard footsteps. Our audio recorder picks up two distant whimpers. Okay, so those sound like footsteps. I think that may just be me and Shane shuffling in the room. Yeah, because the sound is boosted. That the sound point. is boosted, and this place was very, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, gross. So uh, there, was rickety. Just, there was rubble and, uh, you know, leftover shit on the floor, maybe literally. So it's possible that us just rustling would make that noise. So that's that. I don't think there was footsteps. There was another room where we did hear something bang. Uh, when we were investigating, when we were doing the picture thing, so uh, there's a scene in this. In, there's a scene in this episode where we investigate by taking pictures. Uh, I had my hands full, so I left my EVP recorder in like a different part of the room, and we hear a noise coming from that direction. And I look over there. You actually see me look over there in the episode. I heard something in that cell over there. You heard something? It sounded like a pebble moving or something. It could have been just like a drop from the ceiling. That could have been something falling or something thrown, but there was something banging around. Over I don't remember. Of course you don't remember. Last question from Instagram here. Heba176, mm -hmm. I, I think you should have held the rods instead of taping them. Maybe that's why they didn't work. And by the way, don't. why don't you use the spirit box in other rooms? It picks up better stuff than the audio recorder. Sorry, but that thing sucks. Smiley face, love you guys. First off, it's hilarious that you just, just oh, the recorder thing sucks. It's not good. I mean, it's just, well, it's not a, it's not a fancy piece of equipment. It's just a- it's just an audio recorder. just an audio recorder, so. What you get is and what you get. The other thing is just a radio scanner. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What, you, what you get is what you get. Yeah, and that's why I like them, they're analog devices. Yeah. I'm not gonna use any fancy you know, computer software or something because it sure as hell won't convince you. Uh, Ryan, what do we have coming up? This week we talk about uh, aliens. It's very interesting. One of my favorite cases, uh, things get weird. Things get pretty weird. Weirder than usual, actually. Do they? Okay, well, that does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the next episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved this Friday and send your questions in to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and the Instagram page. So send those questions there. All right, our, see you guys next week. Our weekly week. Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga. A hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Vergara, written by nope, me. Nope, no, wait, no. And adored by Stop viewers right and I critics alike. This, this is being done in spite of Commissioned by effort. Ryan Vergara. He no, started this. Take that sentence out. Texas, somewhere off an old dirt road, a dilapidated watering hole about to close for the evening. Behind the bar, a grizzled old bottle of root beer. Someone walks in. We're closed. No, don't worry, partner. I'm not looking for much. Just a sarsaparilla and a few words with an old pal. No, we're out of sarsaparilla. Not sure about the other stuff. Stephen Rootbeer, do you mean to tell me you've forgotten your dearest friend and former bandmate, Gene? I'm critically adored. Wait a second. So this root beer is selling sarsaparilla? Yeah, he said they're all out. But he's a root beer. He works at a bar. But he's a root beer himself, so he's, are people drinking him? Does he have any root beer left in his he bottle? He works at a bar. Well, but do I'm people just... drink the blood out of humans? Well, that's also when a bartender is serving something that's not him. I don't understand what you're saying. You just said here. that he's serving sarsaparilla. We gotta get back to this, Ryan. Do we? You know, I, I think save it's your questions for the end. Well, he's or, or submit them for the, the QA next week. Are people sipping out of his brain? That's okay. Um, okay. Can't say the name rattles a tambourine. Look, Steven. I'm putting the band back together. Like hell you are. Like hell I am. It's my sister, Steven, Jebra. She's getting married. Needs us to play. I can't do it alone. I need the risky fixins. Well, I... I didn't know french fries had siblings. We sure do. You talk to Melba yet? Ain't the risky fixins without her playing sticks. I'm about to hop on the train and do that very thing, and I'd like to have you along for the ride. All right, but listen here. I'm only doing this under one condition. I'm all ears. You gotta let me lay down some seriously chunky bass lines. No, oh, you got yourself a deal. Now we've got a train to catch. A crow ate one of my eyes at the bank last Labor Day, by the way. That's why I have an eye patch now. 
Whoa, what a story. That's the end of it? Yeah. The so, band's getting back together. This is getting good. So, just to be clear, yeah. the last, how many episodes have you done on this stupid shit now this season? I, I don't know, I guess. They've just been conversations about a hypothetical band that doesn't make sense. That's either. the journey, man. The so band's getting back we're together. Just, we've just watched Talking Heads for the past three episodes. Uh, they're probably better than the Talking Heads. That's a, you know, it's, a it's critically just, acclaimed band. This, the Risky Fixins are probably even more acclaimed than them. You got any more expository dialogue you want to push on the audience? Look, they made me keep it expository this season because there was too much action last oh, season. It's okay. hard to animate. That's a, just a, you know, blame your tools. Shoddy craftsmanship, blame the tools. That's kind of what's happening right here. If the, oh, were, they, were made me, they made if, me tone it down. I couldn't really go that far, so I had to make the dialogue exposition. Uh, that, the studio, man, the studio is pushing me. I'm telling you, I got some good stuff up in my mind. That's you, by the way. That's, I know you really hurt my feelings. Good. Now I'm gonna get their sympathy. <laughs> no. That's, leave it, end it on that. Put, a, put sad music over it, a slow zoom on me. If you put end that in, no, no, if you put yeah. that in, you gotta put this part in no, where no, he's no. like, okay, if you put that in, Make them be sad Don't for a second, it. and then include this part no. where he says, now they're gonna be sad. Include this. I'm Don't gonna make sure this. this goes in the episode. God damn it! Yes! yes! Well, you know what? It doesn't even matter, because I actually am really sad. No, no, you can't pull it back like that. No, you can't. I gotta go. You're not fooling me, buddy. You're not fooling anybody. It's been fun, Ryan. You're not fooling me. He just flicked me off out of sight. He flicked me off off frame right now. He's flicking me off right now. No, no, I swear, pan the camera over there, pan the, no, pan the camera. No, no, fuck <laughs>